Welcome to Art with Lorian in the studio, live broadcasting here from Waterfront Studios, three o'clock Pacific Standard Time on Wednesdays. I'm so glad you're here. Uh, so welcome and hello. Um, so I am here in Southern California and uh, we are just riding the waves like with everybody else and uh, we're in this together, the situation in the world, the current um, paradigm shifting and uh, we're in this together as humanity. So it's just really a unique time in history and I'm so glad that I can show up here and uh, you know, share a little bit of what I'm doing and hopefully you are working on some creative projects as well. Um, so what I am working on in this series and actually I started a few weeks ago um, on the painting behind me, I'm doing a rework and uh, it's called Hawaii Tea Leaf. Uh, just to review, it's about uh, four by five feet and I created this painting um, I think about two year and a half ago, almost two years. And I had it a certain way, showed it in a show, art show. And um, then I decided recently in the last couple months that I'm gonna completely change this this painting. It's been reimagined or re I'm reimagining it. And I started to meditate on how I want this painting or how it uh, wants to, to transform. And I, uh, part of my creative process is just tuning into the essence or the spirit of the painting, I'm reworking this painting behind me. And as I'm doing that, I'm creating smaller paintings that uh, go, that are like studies for the painting. And, and this is what I'm working on right now. I'll hold it up. Doo -doo. It's a monarch butterfly. And in my first live broadcast, I painted this on there. So um, anyway, what I'm going to do today is start this live session um, similar to what I did last time, which was, which is to just do a little check-in and do some breathing and also um, see, oops, let me, let me see here do that yeah um see if uh yeah just check in do some breathing and make a connection with the inside of ourselves go within and just tune in for a minute i'm just going to do a few deep breaths it's really simple you can follow along and it's like a grounding and just sort of centering uh exercise so i'm just gonna just take a few slow deep breaths and what I like to do is just really check first you know get comfortable in the physical body sitting down wherever you're sitting or if you're standing or walking but I'm gonna be I'm sitting in a chair so I'm just gonna feel my physical body in the chair feel the chair supporting me connect to my feet on the ground, feel my feet on the ground and just put my hands in my lap and just take an inhale through my nose, hold, and then just exhale. And then inhale. Exhale and just do this a little bit. Just tune in and you can, if you're following along, just breathe freely, deeply on your own, inhaling and exhaling. I'm just kind of stretching my neck. So I'm like dipping my chin down to my chest. And then I'm gonna stretch my neck the other way and just bring it up kind of pull my shoulders down and it's like elongating the neck, like someone's pulling my head from the top of my hair, scalp and just sort of like 
you know, maybe like the top of my, yeah, the top of my head, just kind of stretching me up this way and then having the shoulders drop and just so, you know, there's like a nice um, spine, no curvature, but also like a good posture and just really allowing that breath to flow. Inhale and exhale through the spine and um, yeah, see, I like to see the breath is like inhaling is fresh, clean prana or mana. It's nice energy, clear and clean energy. And just really um, allow that breath to cleanse all of the cells of the body, all the tissues, the muscles, the tendons, the ligaments, the bones, the hair, the facial features from fingertips all the way down to your toes. Allow that inhale to do a super cleanse throughout your body and just sort of give you like a, like for me, it feels like um, just maybe doing like five deep breaths. Feels like getting, um, like taking a shot of vitamin C or B12 or something. It's like a, a really nice, um, infusion of positive energy all right so i thought i would get started um i am working on this painting and i'm gonna just go ahead and start and oh like i was saying before if you have a cup of tea wonderful if you have a project you're working on and you just want to have this on the background and say hello i would that's awesome too um, there's so many ways we create and make things like I love cooking. And for me, it's a creative act. It's a creative process to come up with a meal from what's in the fridge, what's fresh, what needs to be eaten first, and then get creative with, you know, sauces and all that. So if you're cooking, if you're um, making art, making jewelry, making, you know, whatever it is that you're inspired to make, I hope that you can maybe do that along in this time together. And um, so now I'm just gonna get going on this. This is a mixed media painting. And um, the background is set. Now I have my monarch butterfly. And um, so what I'm gonna do today is see these orange parts. I'm gonna create a mixed media element um, now I'm going to layer and texturize and put some interest and some um, more detail work, more detail work and more, uh, more uniquely, I'm going to put in and add what is uniquely something I do with a lot of my paintings. And I just like kind of came up with it. I started doing this in 2011. And um, I didn't, I was just experimenting. And so I'm sharing this here. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm putting something called a high gloss varnish. And there's a couple of brands that makes things like this. It's basically, it's a, it acts as a medium. You can use it with uh, acrylic paint or any water-based paint. I'm gonna be using acrylic gouache. These are my acro gouaches. I just love them. They're by a company called Turner. They're from Japan and the information's in the description, but I'm using these, they're acrylic and gouache, uh, like a hybrid paint. And it's like a, it's a dream paint for me because I love both, but I love gouache more. And so to have that acrylic in it makes it kind of, it, it dries quicker, but it also, it, um, yeah, it's nice. It's it's a different twist than just acrylic and just squash. So I encourage you to check those out. If you're a painter and you're looking for something new, a new art medium. So I'm going to use the color palette that I used before, which is I'm working with oranges, I'm working with yellows, and I'm working with some golds and a little bit of pink because in the butterfly, the monarch butterfly, there's these little air, these little dots and they have a little bit of this beautiful pink. So um, I'm gonna add some more of these white, white detailed uh, markings on the Monarch. Some of them are pinkish and I'm actually gonna put more in here and here and I'll show you. So I have some of these 
powders. And this is what I use a lot in my work. And what I was referring to earlier is something that I just kind of discovered. And they are called powdered pigments. They're by a company called Jacquard, Jacquard. And they're called Pearl X. And I will put these in the description. I have a huge box of them. I've been using them for about, oh, I don't know, nine, nine years now. So they are my awesome. They're my most favorite, favorite, favorite. Um, I just love these and um, art materials. And these are what I'm using today. So I'm just going to hold it up here. What I do is when I have a color scheme in paint, then I pull my colors of the powdered pigments. And just like it sounds, um, these are powders. They're very, very fine. You have to work in a controlled environment. And I'll show you what I mean. Um, they're not like sand. They're like they're like powder. So they're super, super fine. Kind of like um, uh, eyeshadow. So I'll show you. They are, if you can see that, but they're they're like like a powder, like a very fine, fine, finely ground pigments. And pigments are the natural pure color from from the earth. And back in the Renaissance in the early days of oops of, <laughs> of of painting, and I mean way back, way, even if we go to Lascaux into the cave paintings and to the the early markings in the prehistoric times of, of makers in the in Europe and all all over. But basically, I'm thinking of Lascaux, France specifically, and um, those cave paintings. They're made out of pigments they're they're charcoal and and um they're gypsum and they're you know different oxides and those are raw pigments they're powdered they're they're rocks they're from the earth they're earth's you know treasures and and they are how paints basically came to be cobalt and um i mean i could there's a you could go on and on i don't have a whole list in my mind at the moment but this is, it's an awesome research project if you're interested in working at a very fundamental sort of, um, you know, baseline art practices to make your own paints using pigments. There's a lot of resources out there for that. Uh, there's amazing people doing amazing work collecting pigments. And um, there's a place I love to go in New York City called Kremer and they sell pigments from all over the world. These are pigments made out of mica. And as you know what mica is, mica is also known as fool's gold. So it's shiny, it's sparkly, it has a sheen, it has, um, it has a reflective quality. So these are very small, small, finely granulated mica particles with color, with some color. And that's why I have a range here. So I'm going to be applying these onto this painting. And like I said, um, about a controlled environment, what I'm talking about is not a windy day where you're working outside because these powders are going to fly everywhere or not in a closed place where there's not a lot of ventilation. You need some fresh air. They aren't toxic but you can inhale them if you get too close and you know just like anything it's uh they don't smell or anything but they are they're very fine so um, i use them with a liquid medium which i showed you you can use different mediums i use the high gloss um i don't know why i just kind of started with that and uh i have lots of other mediums there's matte mediums there's um varnishes there's this is plain varnish, there's varnish medium combo, there's plain medium, there's, it's kind of, a, it's, there's a lot of liquid mediums to work with um, out there and uh, this is just the one I love. So, um, so what I'm gonna do is I've put some down on my, on my uh, I'm gonna move Kuan Yin over. I'm gonna, I put some down here on, 
my palette. And this is a glass palette. It's easy to clean and it's pretty old. I've had it a super long time. Actually, it's a hand-me-down from my dad. So I'm gonna combine um, some paint. I'm gonna mix an orange and then I'm also going to use some of the pigment medium. Pigment medium, I'm sorry, pigment powder and make a little cocktail with the medium. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Okay, ooh, that's not what I want. All right, let me see. Okay. Do, 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 let me just turn this off. So maybe if you feel like, let's, we could try that live chat. If anyone would like to chime in and whoever is live right now and tell me where you are, what you're making. Um, and if there's a sound quality, let me know if you can't hear me. <laughs> I hope so. But um, I'd love to know where you are. I don't know if the live chat's still broken or whatever, but okay. Anyway, feel free at any time to do that. So I'm mixing the red with a little bit of what red did I use? I'll tell you. I'm using a permanent scarlet. I'm using a permanent yellow deep. I'm also going to put in a permanent lemon. Lemon's a cool yellow medium, or the yellow deep is a little bit of a warmer yellow. You know, each of the colors, especially the primaries, have a warm and cool version. Okay, so yeah, my dad gave me this uh, palette. I love it. It's glass. It's really easy to clean acrylics on it because it's it's glass. It just dries and you just scrape it off. It just peels right off. Okay. So there's that. Now I'm going to add a little bit of my gold. This is an interference violet yellow. Cool. Um, so the thumbs up, does that mean the audio is okay? <laughs> All right, I'm just going to assume it's okay. All right, I'm pouring a little bit of my powder in here now. I'm going to use, and I recommend this, to use a palette knife to bring some of the powder. If you can see, I have a little, little amount of it here. And, you know, I really feel like painting, especially mixed media, but is, it's like cooking, you know, it's like you, it's alchemy really is what it is. It's magical, but um, it's like a little recipe. I'm making like, I'm basically improving a recipe here and I'm gonna put a little bit more. So I don't have any measurements to tell you. I actually, I paint very much instinctively and I paint intuitively and I paint um, kind of ad hoc. So I don't, I usually don't like look things up. I just try it and then later I'll look it up and go, oh, I could have done it like that or oh, that's how I did it or whatever. Like it's not a real, um, it's not a rigid, you know, there's a lot of flow and organic ness to what I do. Okay, so here's what I have. And I'm gonna, it's gorgeous. So I don't know if you can see this. It's a uh, pretty awesome. Okay, and one day I promise I'm gonna have two cameras here, but it just last week it it, func it funkied up my broadcast last week, attempting to use the encoder. <laughs> and um, I wasn't able to get on the right street. Anyway, that's old now, but ultimately I look forward to having my crane camera here. Got the equipment, I just, YouTube made it a little challenging to, to do mm, the, the, anyway, I would love to show you exactly what I'm doing overhead, but I'm going to need to practice that a lot more. So, okay, I'm just putting in some highlights here and I'm, I'll hold it up. This is why I want the two cameras so you can see, but I'll, I'll see if I can pull that off next week. Couldn't do it this week. So I'm just coming in and I'll hold it up. This isn't very wet and drippy, so it's, I can hold it up for you. Okay. And I do a lot of layering and texturizing. So 
This will dry. I'll put more. Um, okay. Okay, I'm going to hold it up and, and give you a gander. Okay, here we go. So here's, I just painted in, see that sheen there? And some of it's from the reflection of natural lighting, but that's right. I put that that cocktail of the pigment powder, which is concentrated in mica, a highly reflective mineral. And the medium, which is this gel, it's a liquid polymer actually. And a little bit of my acryl gouache, Turner brand acryl gouache. And they're actually the first brand that I've seen that makes this like I dreamed I was dreaming of would it be awesome to have acrylic and gouache in one paint tube and one day I was over I looked for I just googled it like how do you I was googling actually I was looking how to make it I was going to combine my acrylic paints with my gouache paints and just like do a, my own cocktail which you can do apparently so anyway now somebody's created it tubed it up marketing it and selling it. And it actually makes it really easy. Um, but I, yeah, like, I mean, when you experiment, it, all it is is an experiment. It doesn't have to be, you know, it's a process. It doesn't have to be perfect. Like, oh, this is, you know, if it doesn't work, then you know. I mean, it's all about the scientific method, right? So mm, sometimes I would rather figure it out on my own and <laughs> stumble around a little bit and then like oh it's so much you know find out later someone already's figured it out and all i had to do is you know look online but i like to do things organically and i you know i like to see how it how it is because then you know i mean there's nothing like the power of you know personal experience right so what i'm doing now is is just putting more of this in and Right now, it's just, it's about one color. It's almost like a peach. I'll put it on my hand. See that? It's like a peachy, kind of metallic, oh, peachy. Oops. Um, okay. So now I'm going to add, bloop, I'm going to add uh, something else. I'm going to add, this one is called, Interference gold. And okay, interference, what does that mean? It's a strange title. Interference means that there's a little bit of iridescence. There's a little bit of, uh, I don't know if you can see it, but it's not just plain, um, plain gold. Like there are so many kinds of gold. This company makes so many variations. That's why it's I'm a kid in a candy store when it comes to pigments, but these are both interference. What it means is it's like iridescent with a little, with an additional color. So this one's called inter interference violet and it's gold and the second color is purple. And so it's like iridescent like butterflies are, like peacocks are, and you know, they have those naturally occurring phenomena that is nature, that is the wisdom of the planets mother nature's gifts of providing all this to us and i mean this one is amazing this one is interference gold so it has a little bit of it's like gold with it with yellow i think it's hard to explain but it's not just plain gold it has a an iridescence to it if i think that's the best way for me to describe so i'm going to do a little bit of this interference gold into I need my palette knife. Oh no, where are you? I need a clean one. All right, I'll just wipe it on my paper towels here. Um, eek. Okay, well luckily I have water and luckily I have paper towels because I have a whole bunch of palette knives. Okay, so I'm gonna use a little bit of this interference gold. I'm gonna add it to what I've already made Oh yeah, this has a little bit of um, pink. Actually, it's a little bit of, it's like pinkish. It's really awesome. Okay, and 
because this is dry, it sucks up, it, it, it absorbs the medium. So I'm going to add more of the medium. Okay. Now, I don't know if live chat's working, but if you have any questions, I'd love to, to answer them. I don't know what's happening. Live chat's off, broken, not available, whatever. Um, loop, let me see. Maybe you, Christina, no, shoot. Okay, so I'm gonna put some of this in. This is lighter. Oh, yeah, look at that. So I'm just layering and, and if you know my work, I paint, I tend to paint very painterly. I, I paint, um, not hard edge, very, very loose and, uh, painterly meaning you can see the brush strokes. You can see, uh, think, think Van Gogh, um, the impressionist, you know, you see the, the brush strokes, you see the marks, you see the, the, the effect of the artist's brush stroke. You see, it's almost like you see where their hand made that mark. In other words, it's not smooth and blended and, and, and hard edge or sharp on the line, like just up against the line. It's, it's a little loose. It's a little um, free. Like I, I, I like the freedom of not being having it be like all colored in. Um, even though I have shapes here, they're organic shapes. They're from my source image, which is, I mentioned um, in my last week's video, this is a monarch butterfly and I use a book source image. It's a book from the 1970s. It belongs to my parents and it's on butterflies. And I just, there's these gorgeous pictures of monarchs and I see monarchs in nature a lot now. I'm sure you do too. They fly around all the time. I saw two or three today, but um, they're moving so fast. <laughs> I can't get them to, you know, you can't chase a butterfly. So anyway, I use a source image like many artists do that don't paint from life or observational. They use a source image or a place to start and there's like a springboard. So these are shapes that are based on an actual monarch butterfly. I'm gonna hold it up and show you. So it's starting to, um, I'm bringing in more, let's move this little guy, bringing in more uh, different colors. You know, I put down two layers now. And another thing I like to do is I like to, I'm going to let it dry a little bit. Um, and I'll share a secret with you. Something that a lot of mixed media artists do is we use small old travel hair dryers that I've, this is now designated an art studio hair dryer. I mean, it's in good working condition, but I just, I keep it with all the stuff here. I'm not gonna turn it on, it's very loud, but this is how on a low setting, um, between layers, especially if you're a mixed media artist or want to do that kind of painting and creation, there's a lot of layers. There's a lot of textures and there's buildup and in between each layer to, to expedite the process, it's really helpful to use either sun if you're in a high, like a dry, super sunny, hot place. And that's what I've done a lot working out in 90s and 80s degree weather is the sun dries it up so fast. But in inside conditions, in colder conditions and seasonal, you know, winter and different conditions where you don't have the hot sun, I use a hair dryer and I put it on low setting. Otherwise, um, you know, it can blow stuff around. Now you might want it to blow some things around for some effects. And I do that too in my work. Um, I blow with a straw sometimes to create an effect. But anyway, I don't need to use this right now. It's drying pretty quickly. And uh, that's because there's acrylic paint and there's acrylic uh, liquid medium. So as you know, plastics are so special. <laughs> and what's special about plastic other than being, you know, a tricky element of life plastics, um, but acrylics, which are plastics, acrylic 
paints and art supplies, they dry very quickly. They close up very quickly. Their acrylic is a system of painting of materials that is a, called a closed system. In other words, it doesn't stay breathing. It, it dries very quickly once the moisture evaporates and then it's done. It's, it's painted on there. And the only way to change it is to paint over it. You can't go in and keep working like with gouache Gouache are open system paints. They're made out of their watercolors with gypsum. And they, which is chalk, and they stay open. So for example, you can use a gouache paint, put it down, go away, come back the next day, spray some water with a squirt bottle and the paint comes back to life. You can move it, you can touch it with your fingers, it'll come off on your fingers, you can, blend and mix optically mix paint with gouache they they stay open so they the only way they close down is if you seal them with a with a varnish a spray a, a, a sealant um whether it's mod podge or sprays you know as um, sealers polymer sealers like the spray cans, like spray paint, the clear sealants, or brush on something like this, which seals it, the gouache, the gouache paints stay open. So I love gouache paints for that reason. And also it's really important to seal them because um, especially if you're gonna sell it or you know have it out, it can, if it gets water on it, it'll it'll bleed, it'll drip, it'll it'll still be uh, open, it'll be malleable. So anyway, my my paints are pretty dry here, but the um, hair dryers are really awesome to expedite the drying process. I'm gonna go ahead now, and there are some darker areas in my butterfly. I'm gonna show you the book I'm working from. Oh, excuse me, and my little thing went like that. Okay. So here's what I'm working with. I'm working with this book and I'm working on the, from this picture right here. So here's what I'm emulating. This is where my inspiration's coming from to paint this butterfly, which for me, this butterfly theme is so appropriate in these times of personal and global transformation. So I'm really, I'm really loving this um, this topic, this uh, subject, and uh, I love butterflies. So, anyway, um, I am going to now put the darker part of the wings in, and I'm going to use these two. I'll show you what I have. Uh, one is called Super Russet, like Russet Potato. And one is called Super Copper. So these are um, reddish, like brick, and kind of coppery. So I'm going to use these guys. And I'm just using a small brush right now. It's a, a chisel end. I also was thinking of using one of these. These are nice. And uh, I mean, I'm using smaller brushes because I'm in a, working in a smaller area. Like this is a, a brush I might use to either one of those two, pointy, round, and there's a flat brush. But okay, so I'm gonna pour in my my super copper. Intense there. Okay. Okay. So I want to know how you're doing. Is live chat working? Can anybody, if you're watching, um, I don't think the chat's working. Tell me how you're doing. This is like a one-way combo, <laughs> which is why I'm doing these lives and partly to have um, a two-way conversation. <laughs> okay, so I have my my russet, and I'm going to paint with my palette knife, actually. So 
see, here's the russet. It's really hard to see. But I'm going to put it in. I'm going to paint with the palette knife. And um, what I want is to not completely blend the powder. I want the powders to build up. And if you know my work, you know what I'm talking about. I, I leave chunks of powders and let them dry. And then I spray. I usually will spray them down. I'm not going to do any of that inside, though. Spraying is an outdoor activity. But, yeah, I'm going to uh, bring in that. I'm going to get a new brush, too. Ah. I'm bummed that live chat's not working. I mean, if it is, I, I don't know. I, I feel like, I feel like, I feel like you're off. People, you know, you want to talk to me, but there's a some issue with the chat. Okay, so I'm just bringing in this. I'm using a brush now. And if if you know one of the things I, I do is I don't totally mix. I let I, I optic in other words I don't mix here and then go here and then psh, you know flatten it all out. I I do a combination I would say of optically mixing. So optical mixing is mixing on the substrate. In this case, I'm using a stretched canvas um, or you know mixing on the palette and. Mixing on the palette is good too, and I, I do both, especially with powders because they're they're kind of messy. You need a place to play with them. Okay, now I mentioned earlier about that pink. Okay, so I'm gonna I'll show you what I'm doing here in a second. Oh my God, this is gorgeous. This russet is just so awesome. Can you see that? Oh my god. This stuff, <laughs> these materials are so inspir inspiring for me. I just, ugh. This is like my makeup bar or whatever. I love this stuff so much. Okay. Um, okay. Now, yeah. So I had two objectives for this live today. One was to work on the mixed media elements of these these markings on the butterfly, and the second one was to do the black outline around the butterfly. Because as you know, these monarchs are black. Um, backgrounds with orange and white dots and I decided I think I'm just gonna outline this butterfly I'm going to keep it blue just because that's what I do I do weird stuff <laughs> um, and um, in other words not true to for you know, you know natural color it's gonna be a little off in terms of you know color scheme. It's a blue monarch butterfly, but I'm going to do a black outline and that'll help with the make the butterfly pop a little bit whenever you outline things. Okay, I'm going to show you what I'm doing now. I'm doing some texturizing with my palette knife. And thank you so much for joining me here today, even though I can't live chat with you, which is unnerving. Okay. So I'm going to hold it up as close as possible. See that texturizing here? Right in here. And I'm going to pull back. Yeah. Let me see. Okay. Okay. So I don't think I'm going to have time to do the black outline. I'm not sure. It's about almost an hour. Um, but um, maybe that's for next time, and I think so. 
But yeah, I'm just going to continue to put my textures in. And um, so what, what I'm doing here is, um, so the background is dry. It's been dry for a while. There's little powders that are coming off from somewhere. So I'm just kind of wiping them out. Yeah, this is no this is no surprise. These powders they're not like they're not like beach sand. They're not thick and coarse and gritty. They are literally like they're like eyeshadow in a little pot, but you definitely don't put them on. Do not buy these for makeup. <laughs> they're non they're non comedogenic or whatever. They're not safe to put on the face. Um and again, I'm gonna post I'm going to include in the description these material, these powdered acrylics and or pigments. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do now is hmm, I'm going to add a little bit of those pink areas. So I'm going to get my white. This is the acryl gouache. And I'm going to put more of my, see these white dots? I'm, I'm missing some of the dots, so I'm gonna put some of them in the body. Oop, the body needs some of the little dots. There's some on the head, but, um, and I'm gonna put a little bit more, and there's some that are pink over here. I'm gonna add those. So, I mean, the way I, oh, that's awesome. The, woo, yeah, ooh, it just drill, it dripped. Okay, eek. The way I work is I don't really do, perfectly photographic art. I work from an image sometimes and then it it's not supposed to look like it because that's I work at in abstracts, you know, I'm an abstract I you know, I do abstract work. Abstract and mixed media techniques. And so I don't want it I'm not trying to make it look like a photograph. I'm just the photograph is a is in lieu of an actual butterfly here sitting still for me <laughs> to to be inspired and, and create in an art form. So that's basically what a source image is for me. It's it's in lieu of the real thing. Um, obviously the real thing is the best, but I'm gonna, the picture's good for now. And I'm gonna put some more of this white, these little white markings on the butterfly. Here's the brushes I'm looking through. It's a big thing. I also have a bigger brushes and another little dealy bob. But yeah, look at this. This is a new brush. This brush actually came. Oh, this is made in Japan. This brush came with the set of acryl gouaches. That's how awesome this is. They came. This set, I bought it as a set, as like a trial to see how they are. Because you can get a huge collection of them or singles or whatever. It came with three awesome, it came with these three brushes. So anyway, I highly recommend this. This set. It's really great. Um, okay, so I'm going to use this new brand new brush. I'm going to put a little water on it the white. I'm not adding a medium. I'm just gonna, you know, what mediums do is they kind of thin the paint, but they add body. It's different than adding water. Water also thins water-based paints, but liquid mediums, um, just like oil painters use, like back in the day, turpentine or walnut oil. You know, presently a lot of my dad uses walnut oil. You need like a medium. It's like a carrier carrier so they actually extend the life of the paint if, if you add a, a drop of the the medium then it 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 stretches out your paint gives it you know elongates it gives you more of it and in the end kind of saves saves um i don't know about money but saves you know yeah and uh, yeah, these oranges are amazing. Okay, so I'm coming in here with more of these little dots. I'm gonna put more on the, the body of the butterfly. The butterfly has like little 
kind of marks that go down and like this. I'll show you what I just did. I just did, whew, I just put those in. They're like three or four little rows. So that's, that's looking kind of good. I like that. And then I'm gonna put more smaller ones down in the bottom here. Beautiful. These butterflies are amazing. Okay. I missed some up here when I first put these whites in. There's markings. And this is where they're pinker. They're pinker up at the top. And well, they're pink in different areas, but they're like a pale pink. So beautiful. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. All right, that's okay. Now. <sighs> I hope everyone's okay. Hope you're spending enough as much time as you can outside as much as we all are inside. I mean, obviously not as much, but balancing that because find, you know, getting outside once a day or at least, right? Cause it's, oh my God. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, my joke that I kind of say internally to myself, I have a good chuckle and I'll talk to my dad about this sometime soon. And this is like the ultimate being grounded. <laughs> It's like, because I used to get grounded, right? And uh, this is like, we're all grounded. We're all on restriction and it's not nice, you know, in terms of our mobility and seeing closed parks and seeing yellow caution tape in some of our favorite places that we get exercise and stay healthy with the natural elements and the trails and it's just, for me, that's really, I think, been the hardest part is um, where I, you know, my church, which is nature, is just having those restrictions put up. That has been really, it's uh, having to have a lot of compassion, self-compassion, and just whew, you know, take a deep breath. Okay, like the two that were closed today after just being open yesterday. You know, um, I'm like, yep. And I was thinking it's only a matter of time in a way. Like I was surprised they were still open and it's like, yeah, well, they're closed now. So, I mean, I guess you could always jump the fence. You know, like I was saying before, I just don't want to get into have any issues. So anyway, Moo and I figured, I figured out some interesting solutions for on today's walk um okay so anyway we're just gonna keep being creative and you know doing the best we can that's all we can really do right positive and really just use this time to heal too to the planet is she is healing she's getting a nice reset a, a break i'm sure you guys know like the Venice canals are finding some equilibrium with wildlife. And I mean, oh, I saw an opossum. We saw an opossum today. So we're out at about 1230 p.m. PST. And we had just left the place that we went to go walk with the yellow tape. And I was like, okay, so we U-turned it and we're going to go walk towards our car. And this moose starts barking and pulling me because there's an opossum and this is the middle of the day. And so, <laughs> I mean, we have wild peacocks where we live and those are awesome to see, but this little opossum was by himself and he was not, or she was not too comfortable being out and being seen and especially by a big dog and aren't, they're night, aren't they night nocturnal? So I was like, oh my gosh, what's this little, it might have, I think it was a girl. 
I feel like it was a little pregnant possum. Opossum. Oh, anyway, it was really like, wow. At night we see them, at night we see raccoons, we see skunks, we have some wildlife here, urban wildlife, but coyotes, of course, but he was just, or she was just like, or they, you know, were just, yeah, well, maybe they, this little possum felt safe to be out because the humans, I don't know, there's actually more humans walking around during the day on city, on the streets. People are exercising and getting out with social distancing and all that, but they're also, like I used to be the only person for miles sometimes walking. I, we wouldn't see anybody. We wouldn't see any humans for like hour an hour. <laughs> so anyway, so it goes, so it goes. Okay, so I'm putting in these dots. I'm going to hold it up and show you. Um, part. This is two parts. One of the reasons why we kind of re-went over my dots, I brought them out. They're a little bit brighter. Um, they need to, you know, a little more white in there. And then I also gave time for the yellows and the oranges to dry a little bit. Um, cause again, I'm not going to use this hair dryer, but you know, it's, um, it's, it, it's, it's kind of, it's getting thick. It's not, it's actually not dry. There's like, this is super wet here because I put a lot on, um, but the plan, here's my plan moving forward, is to continue to do some layering and bring in some darker colors. And I'm gonna show you why. On the oranges of the butterfly, if you look up here, see here, this part is dark. It's a darker shade of orange, like a burnt orange. And that's what I'm going for on this butterfly that I'm making is to have that shading and then it's you know it's it's lighter here it's darker here so i don't know if i'm getting this right with my fingers but see there's there's a whole range of uh, values in this butterfly this, these wings so i want to put all that in the painting through the way i paint which is layering texturizing mixed media etc so I'm gonna put more of these darker colors. I'm gonna let this dry some more, it's not time now. So these are the two I'm using. I'm gonna put these in the description. I'm also going to put that pink in. I think I'm gonna do that now. Here's my pink on the white dots that are pinkish. This is called pink gold and it is pink gold. Look how beautiful that is. So it's a pinkish gold. And I'm gonna put some of the, uh, paint some of those pinkies in these whites. Let me see here. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right there. I'm gonna do now. I don't want that dry, but I want that to be wet. I'm gonna put my pink in now, and I'm gonna just. Pour a little bit of the pink. That's another thing you can do. Okay, a lot just came out, and that's okay. I'll use it. But um, if you want to control how much powder you're using, use a clean palette knife between each powder distribution. Um, that'll help um, save it and make it last longer and not waste it and all that. Okay, so now I'm gonna, I'm gonna just mix with my brush, and I'm putting this pink powder into the white mixture. I don't know if you can see that, but okay, and I'm gonna put a little bit more of my medium because it's it's a little chunky and I need it to be a little bit more fluid. And okay, it's a fair I'll, I'll paint it on my hand. Here's my pink. See that? so pretty it's right there it's like a it's a gold pink so nice okay so i'm gonna oops okay yeah and i just want to say this comment i made about being grounded 
I don't feel like we're in trouble or we've done anything wrong and we're being punished. I'm not talking about that. <laughs> I want to clarify. I'm talking about being, you know, um, I mean, I heard it. Someone said it today. It's like being, it's like the world's been put on a, a time out. <laughs> and, you know, we can use this as a constructive time and not feel you know, make the most of it, take advantage of this time, take it, make, you know, it, I mean, we've got to come to terms with it, right? And we've also, you know, make, make lemonade out of lemons, like it is what it is, right? And accept and embrace what is. And at the same time, I was thinking, like, I feel like, I kind of feel like I'm grounded. And, and I'm not a bad person, you know, I haven't done anything wrong. I'm not being punished. It's just, that's what's happening and it's not me it's humanity is all i mean wimbledon got canceled wimbledon the, t the tournament which is one of my favorite things to to watch and anyway i mean that's just one of the sporting events among you know thousands but that is in july and they just they announced it today and it's like that's 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 being grounded <laughs> in my opinion it's sort of like that's um that's that's big it is, i'm not talking about postponing it they're not postponing it they are canceled so it's like in 2021 is when the next wimbledon when wimbledon championships at wimbledon is and i mean there's so many sports that are being canceled but it's it's this is in the future and it's i mean obviously olympics and you know, so many things. But um, anyway, I'm a big tennis fan and a, a tennis player. And that, that was like, wow, this is a few months away. And it's it's already been, it's affected and it's canceled. So that's kind of what I mean by being grounded. It's like a whole nother element. And, and it's not, an, it's no judgment, right? Just noticing. And um, okay, so I'm um, put some pinks in. I'm not going to hold it up because they're kind of wet. I don't want them to drip. But what I'll do is I'll post a picture of this where I've left off. I'll put it in my social media feeds. If you um, are following me, if you see me on Instagram and in that space or on Facebook or my Facebook business page or in Twitter or. Um, yeah, uh, any of those places. Uh, and maybe I'll even stick it at the end of this video. I'm not sure. But I'll meet you here next week. Same time, same place. I'll be broadcasting live at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time from San Pedro, California. That's where I'm located. And um, from Waterfront Studios. And I'll be continuing with my beautiful Monarch Butterfly rendition. And uh, I wish you well. I hope that you're healthy and safe and doing as best you can to ride out the waves of this unique time in history. And, um, you know, the word that we hear over and over is unprecedented. So I know there's been other times in history where humanity has been impacted but as far as modern times and contemporary times this is pretty big and uh unprecedented and i just wish you all the best lots of love and hugs time and lots of love and drink your tea and hydrate and get out on walks and may we all continue to stay healthy and uh to stay positive and optimistic and see the silver lining in this experience of, uh, of human, all of humanity is going through and the global, global population, our planet. And um, with that, I'll sign off. Thank you for joining me. And until next time, we'll see you in the studio. Bye.